What's going on guys? Teen Mechanic here. 18 year old mechanic actually. Um, we're gonna have to work on that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what exactly I have in mind for a transition yet, but I've got a few ideas uh, that are that have been coming to mind lately uh, in terms of what I want this channel to look like in the near future, given the fact that I'm now 18 years old and I can do all kinds of illicit activities and be tried as an adult. I'm going to pick up my uh, my LTD or my Ford Custom. It is a 1971 Ford Custom. If you haven't been following along, I've had a couple of recent videos on that car. It has been sitting in a field basically since 1986-ish, um, and uh, it was buried up to its frame in mud, and it's been kind of preserved, preserved like a petrified log. So, um, in this video, we are gonna totally do, I don't know how many of you guys watch them, but junkyard dig style, baby. We're gonna get this thing on the trailer, pretend like it's been sitting in a barn or in a field and uh, load it up on the trailer, bring it home and start working on it. It's definitely gonna need a new engine. If you haven't been following along, the 351 Windsor that's in it is bad and locked up. And I put some Marvel Mystery Oil, I ended up taking the heads off and uh, they're sitting in the car right now. Uh, but at this point, it is not a not a saveable engine. Uh, not an engine that I want to save. Uh, I'm sure I could if I really wanted to, but it's not something I want to do. As you can see here, we're definitely losing daylight. It is going to be a dark trailer harvest kind of deal. This guy, it's thanks to this guy over here. That's, that's, that's how we, we get things done. She's in the garage, hoodless, she's topless. It's a different kind of topless, but uh, you know, wow, that is, that is excellent. Okay, we're home now. I didn't record most of what happened to be quite honest. Getting this thing to where it is right now, which some of you guys might recognize is my garage, was a tremendously difficult task, especially considering the fact that this back alley here is an absolute skating rink. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Like, you can, you can, well, okay, maybe not there as much, but the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, right here. Like, I was slipping and sliding everywhere, backing a truck up onto this with the trailer and rolling this off was no easy task. Getting it onto the trailer where it was being stored was also a tremendously difficult task. Um, so I didn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity to film, uh, but now that it's in here, it actually looks quite nice. <laughs> no, it looks quite a bit better. Um, this hood, I had tremendous difficulty getting open. It got stuck latched. And now we've got all that garbage to deal with. So, what I'm going to do first is get that engine out right now. I'm just going to do it super quick. And as ironic as that may sound, it's actually probably going to be fairly quick, considering that bell housing bolts and engine mounts are really all we have to deal with. Okay, first step. I don't know what this is, but it has been in the engine bay since day one. What's inside? Ugh. I don't even want to know. I don't even, I don't even know what that is. Ew, gross. Okay, I'm going with hazardous waste. I will keep these, even though they're pretty much destroyed. Don't really care. The only parts I'm really going to be keeping is carb intake, valve covers, manifolds, things like that. Maybe the distributor, even though I'm not using it. Um, and the rest, junk. These hinges are actually really clean and nothing looks bent. So what I'm going to do is soak these in ATF and acetone and just pray that they free up because that would be great if I could reuse these. This distributor has like a tiny bit of play. I might keep it. Yeah. I mean, it looks a little broken, but I might keep it. I'm not sure.
There you go. That was also very difficult. Oil dipstick tube. This goes with the engine. The engine's done. Garbage. Okay, it's time for tools because this is where we're at right now. That took me probably 10 minutes to get to this point. Oh, wait, more garbage. Good throw, Joe. So, all we've got left, we've got our kick down rod right here. That looks like our heat riser valve shield over here. I actually missed a couple of hoses, not gonna lie. Now, we're pretty close to ready to get this transmission disconnected trans cooler lines off of here i'm leaving that oil filter what is this what does that say that's an old moto master filter that's kind of cool i think we'll keep that on there that's pretty neat i think i'm going to keep that on there that's pretty neat so basically uh to get the engine out we are looking at a through bolt on that mount and likely one on the other mount um, the next thing I got to do is get the starter off, trans cooler lines off, bell housing bolts out, and then those through bolts. And that's absolutely it. So I'm going to go get my, and the radiator out too. I'm going to go get my tools and my impact and let's knock this out in like five minutes. Okay. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and get this alternator out of here, starter wires off. And, uh, once that's done, I'm gonna go for these trans cooler lines, and then really I'm gonna just disconnect the trans, which I just realized requires going underneath. Damn it! Actually, screw that. I'm taking the torque converter with the engine for sure. I do not feel like crawling under this mouse infested crap. Um, so, I am just gonna clean off this radiator and probably get it out of my way first, because that's pretty easy a uh, couple of bolts and, uh, and then I think she just popped right out so that's what I'm gonna do first and then we'll do wiring and then bolts transmission fluid in it. There's a little bit of fluid in it. Dump some nice disgusting coolant into there. Whew. Nasty. We are definitely running out of daylight fast these days, but for those of you wondering, yes, I'm keeping this radiator. This is how much room we have to work with now. Actually, no. This is how much room we have to now with, with that stupid vacuum line out of the way. God. I hope we're not leaking any power steering fluid on the floor here, but this is such a cheesy little cooler. It's so funny. This ought to cut the fuel line. Like butter. Okay, starter's coming out now. Beefy sucker. Beefy. All right, this is where we are. It is now bell housing bolt time. Fairly certain there's nothing holding these lines to the block. There is not. Uh, we're looking at a 5 8 or a 9 16 set. Actually, it looks a lot like a 9 16 even though it's holding on a pretty big part of the car, the engine. Uh, I am going to have to remove that filter, so I'm going to go ahead and Kick this underneath, right around there. Go ahead and pull this full filter off. I kind of want to keep it and preserve it if I can. Um, otherwise, we're good. Okay, so we want to go left. There you go. That was easy. All right, let's see if there's actually 
any oil in this sucker. I'm curious if there if there is because that's not really what I wanted to have happen, but whatever. And no, no oil came out whatsoever. So as you may already be able to kind of tell, we have phenomenal access to our bell housing bolts. This looks like a C6 trans. We're looking at 5 8 or 11 16 bolts for sure. Um, and it looks like we've probably got one, two, three, four, five, six of them, is my guess. Let's see here, yeah, one, two, three, four, yep, yeah. five or six for sure. All right, I'm going to start on this side. Oh, they're nice and loosey-goosey too. That's, that is fantastic news. This is the shift bracket I'm taking off right now, kind of off screen. Can't really see it super well, but the shift linkage is already disconnected. Uh, by the previous owner. I just realized something. I was talking about getting under the car to get the torque converter bolts out. I just realized the engine's locked up, so getting under this thing would do absolutely no good. The only thing connected now at this point are the two through bolts for the engine mount, so let's go ahead. Actually, what time is it? Let's go ahead and get the engine hoist and get this thing out of hell. So basically what I'm gonna do is hook a couple of cylinder head bolts or put them in opposite corners of the motor and hook a chain to them. And we're gonna use this cherry picker flim flam to get this thing out of here. I don't know what I'm saying anymore either, guys. But uh, yeah, we'll just lift this thing straight up and straight out. There are five bell housing bolts, not six because of the starter. And uh, yeah, this thing should go pretty easily, guys. I mean, it's pretty much ready, so let me find my chain. It's in this vicinity area, some, somewhere. Um, that's, nope, those are snow chains. I'm wondering if this is a familiar sight. I think it definitely should be. Let me just come out and say it right now. You can't do this in a new car. I've never seen someone be able to straddle an engine, let alone a V8 in a Ford Fusion. Pretty interesting. What the heck? It's spinning. Okay guys, from what I can tell, this engine is fully disconnected. We got the through bolts out on both sides. Cooler lines aren't even connected. Bell housing bolts are out. The only thing that isn't is the torque converter. Otherwise, this thing is ready to come out. So I'm gonna move this crap out of the way and then we'll, oh, here we go. There she goes. be very annoying getting it off of that torque converter, but we can definitely do it. I'm going to grab this ridiculously sized pry bar, pry on the, in between the engine and transmission here. Looks like the trans might be coming out of this unit too. It might just go and undo those bolts real quick. If we look underneath, what do we got here? We got the transmission mount which is there and then it just kind of slides right out of there and that's kind of it but I don't really want to undo the speedometer cable and whatever everything else so Well, it's another day, and I've thought about things overnight, and now I'm thinking, instead of trying to separate that transmission, that transmission has to come out of it anyway, especially if I'm putting a big block in this car. So, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to bite the bullet and go way underneath here and start disconnecting transmission linkage. We have this weird exhaust hanger looking thing coming off of the tail shaft as you can see there the drive shaft is just splined i don't even really want to take it out to be quite honest 
Um, and then we start looking over here at the transmission mount, which looks like it's just got a through bolt. I really hope that's a through bolt because if it's not, that's really irritating. Um, otherwise, we've got a speedometer cable right there. And that's pretty much it except for shift linkage, which has already been quote unquote disconnected. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think, I think that's it. So we've got shift linkage over there, uh, and then on the other side, trans cooler lines, but all that is already going towards the front, which is the direction this thing is coming out anyway. So, um, instead of draining the fluid, I'm just going to hope I don't make a mess, which is what I do every time. And every time I absolutely make a mess. I'm also just noticing this, uh, speaker wire i don't i don't know what that is um looks like speaker wire going on the outside of the car if we follow it over where does it go where does that go oh that, that goes right over the axle and maybe it was for fuel i don't know um rear end actually doesn't look too bad uh, how does that drive shaft connect to the to the flange there how does it connect to that yoke let's see well, uh, yes is the answer. So anyway, yeah, I'm not pulling that off of there, uh, at least not right now, because it looks like we got to take those caps off of there, and I'd really much rather not do that, let me tell you. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. What a stupid design. Oh, what a stupid design that is. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and stop lollygagging and go ahead and uh, get rid of all that garbage under there. Um, and then this whole unit's just going to come out. I don't want to waste any time screwing around with nonsense. I went ahead and disconnected all of the transmission linkage, um, which was one rod, and uh, broke the speedometer cable off because it wouldn't come out. This right here, this thing I called an exhaust hanger, is absolutely not that. It's a vibration dampener, and uh, three annoyingly placed bolts took that whole thing out. And then, the only thing left is the transmission mount. Uh, that was the through bolt that was really easy to take out. The transmission mount kind of straddles the cross member. If this is how you're looking at it relative to the car, the cross member goes across the car laterally, and then the transmission mount sits like that. Through bolt goes in down here, I had to kind of bend this end of the transmission out, out kind of, to get it to come up and away, but it's up and away. So let's go ahead and get this engine up and away. Now it's worth mentioning, I got a new tripod mount for my cell phone, so that's very helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna keep talking, but uh, from now on out, uh, at least in the videos, it should be a lot more stable, no more ladder tripods. We're off the mounts in the engine. The problem is now the transmission mount, since the engine is up, the transmission tail shaft has gone down, so I gotta keep an eye on that. The only chance I have of getting this out is taking the transmission mount off itself, which is going to be extremely irritating, but we're gonna do it. Okay, somehow I managed to get the mount off, you can see what we're working with here. The engine is certainly wanting to come out now. So let's see what happens here. I saw it budge forward. <laughs> I told you. Every time I don't drain fluids and think, ah, it'll be fine. It's not fine, guys. I'm serious. It's never once been fine. It's about right. There we go. Saved it. 
definitely saved it. Check it out, no mess. That is quite, <laughs> oh, let me tell you how frustrating that is, guys. I don't know what it is. My pet peeve with fluids and getting all over the floor, I can't tell you. It's a good thing I didn't clean the floor before I started. I kind of had a feeling something like this might happen. <sighs> okay, well, we're not coming out this side yet, so. All right, let's just get this freaking dumb thing out of here. It's no problem guys it's in the garage it's not it's not wildlife is not at stake here don't worry oh let me tell you Ooh, that's frustrating okay this not entirely sure what the heck's going on with that what you know what works just as good as a roll pin a roofing nail Okay, we have a nice path. Let's see if we can wheel this away. All right, guys, I need to show you what's been happening to me for the last 20 minutes. And that is that here was where the camera was, and this is what kept happening to me. And if you try and walk, okay, hang on, I, I am not acting. I'm trying to find, oh my God. I'm trying to find a spot that I can grip onto, okay. There we go, now I'm up. See, that's twice a minute. Okay, here we go. Engine is officially out of this gorgeous car. That is the absolute disaster we made. We? Who's we? There is no we. It's called Ocean FML. And yeah, there you go. Drivetrain is out. Here is the crappy old drivetrain with coolant and Marvel Mystery Oil and transmission fluid. The transmission I am going to keep, the engine I am not. If anybody wants a completely seized and uh, destroyed cylinder wall 351 Windsor, you just let me know. What I'm probably going to do is put it here with my 4R70W, the LTD's exhaust, my F-150 struts, and uh, just hope nobody steals that thing. I mean, God, just God forbid somebody walks down this back alley and sees this, you know, 650 pound assembly and decides, hey, I need one of those and, and walks away with it. That would be terrible. I'm not anticipating there's a lot worth saving on this thing, but uh, the transmission I'll keep just in case. Um, but really, there's not much on this thing that I have any use for.
yeah, this, I gotta do a scrap run, that's for sure. Um, holy crap. You know what's really good to do? It's better than sea foam. It's grease foam. Alright, I'm gonna slide this as far into this corner as I can for my dad to see later. But, in the meantime, check it out guys. All we did was make an irreversible mess. And, uh, we got the engine out. Look at that though. That really bothers me. Oh, that's a disaster, but nothing we can do about it. Now, in the next video, we are probably going to be either getting this engine ready, or engine bay ready to accept another engine, or installing one. This is how you can tell it was a good day, productive day. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm very excited to see where this project goes. I mean, I got this car for free, and it's already... <laughs> already kind of being interesting to deal with um i can't even move it to squeegee that fluid so i don't know i'm just gonna let it put a nice circle in the pavement it's not even a circle okay and the coolant too anyway so if you guys have watched to the end of the video i would like you to please comment down below and let me know what engine you would like to see in this car. Not saying I can, if you say a 392, if you say something that isn't Ford, and, or something that is Ford, and say, hey, Coyote swapped the thing, or 62, or whatever, uh, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but if you say small block, like a 351 Cleveland, or a 351 Windsor, if you really wanna see another one in there, there's a lot you can do with them. I know a lot about the 351 Windsors. Um, but if you want to see a Cleveland in it, or if you want to see a three, 390 in it, or a, four, a big block, 428, 460, please let me know. I'm very open to suggestions at this point because I, I don't know what's going in it yet. So if you guys want, if you guys have any specific thoughts on what should go in this, uh, in this car, do let me know. I'm very excited. Also, let me know how soon you'd like to see something done with this interior. I mean, if you can call it an interior. Um... I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to get those cylinder heads off the seat before the seat gets any more damage. Not that it really matters, but... Oh, my God. Oh, God, that's so gross. I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.